In 1985, I was living in my hometown, Cardiff, uh, to be more specific, Rumney, East Cardiff, and uh, going to uh, Rumney Comprehensive, which, uh, with all respect to my teachers, was a dump. <laughs> <laughs> it was bordering an area called Land Rumney, which is, which is rough, and another area called St Melons, which is even rougher. And uh, I went to school um, next to an all-boys Catholic school. Um, so there was lots of fights going on. That was a sort of pastime fighting at lunchtime, <laughs> which was, um, yeah, got a bit crazy actually, although I was never partook in any kind of fighting. Quite a lot of music posters. Uh, I also had, much to my mum's um, disgust, the crass. Uh, my, friend's, my, my friend's older brother was really into punk. He had like, loads of brilliant punk records. So I got into punk through him was really into the clash and then discovered crass and I thought no this is this is proper this is really good this is what punk is shouting very political so I had um, stations of the crass and crass albums sort of folded out to like half the size of a football field so I had like um, the poster of feet of stations of the crass on my wall and my mum used to come in every day and look at it. Oh my God, that on the wall. so there's a lot of music posters I used to copy stuff copy lots of Star Wars characters, copy loads of stuff from 2000 AD. I used to send in a drawing a week of, of, to 2000 AD magazines. These are published readers' drawings. I never got published. Because um, I think I just literally copied stuff, you know. Um, so there was, uh, you know, things like that around, but I didn't really do any art at home. And I, I did art at school at the time. And um, I had two art teachers. We didn't do A-level art at school. I went to O-level. And one of the art teachers was great, Mrs. Dimitriadis, um, Greek lady, it was awesome. And then my other teacher was not awesome, um, got drunk at lunchtime and, you know, he was just, just, yeah, not very good. Just throwing some books, do that. And then while he sort of had a doze, sort of sleep off his three, three pints he had at lunchtime. <laughs> Thought which boggles the mind. When I think of school, I think of laughing really having kind of fun, which is probably not, <laughs> probably, probably um, goes to explain my, um, my poor uh, uh, exam results <laughs> in my own levels. <laughs> my friend Gavin Jones, I think, uh, who I knew since uh, I was in junior school. Um, and he, he came to junior school halfway through uh, his, he came from a family that moved around quite a bit and they moved to Cardiff or that area of Cardiff. So I grew up with him in junior school and then we both went to the same high school, Rumney High. So he just became our best, best mate through school. So we were into, we were both into like the same music, both got like obsessed with the band Japan and a little bit kind of more interesting sides of New Romantic and then going into sort of goths. And he was brilliant. He was like the hardest goth in Cardiff, which is great. <laughs> you know, we both had like makeup and hair all over the place and looking like loons. But you know, if if some um, if some poor person sort of picked on him, they just they just had a big surprise <laughs> by getting stomped by this guy in eyeliner. <laughs> it was John Peel for me. Um, you know, like like lots of kids to that age, you know, you used to tape John Peel, or like have your finger hovered over a pause, pause record, you know, tape all the good bits, all the bits you liked, and then end up going out and getting them. So, you know, turned on to all sorts of stuff, but I think the constants I listened to were like specials, J Japan, um, um, let's see who else, yeah, a bit of punk, a bit of crass, so it's quite a, dis quite a disparate selection of stuff really. I mean you can't couldn't get more different than crass in Japan. 
them going for like long, a long bike ride, bike ride in the pouring down rain to a record shop to get a get a particular single, and you know it was just like wow, you know, really, it was just you projected so much onto this like artifact of some sort of relics. I've got it, it's mine, you know. I still have the same hunt for records now, but it's just just go online, bang, yeah, and it's like oh, I got that now. Whereas it was just so exciting to get that at the time, and it's going to work. You know, work literally to to afford to get it, and then actually find a record shop that did it. Um, but in Cardiff, that was a really good thing about Cardiff. It's brilliant, brilliant record shop. Yeah, Mrs. Kelly's second-hand record shop that's still there now. Kelly's, and then Spillers is uh, arguably the world's oldest record shop. Um, and then you had Rock, uh, Rockaway Records in the market stall in Newport. A lot of the punk sort of side of things. So it was good. You know, there was there was places and kind of clubs. And venues where you could go and see those bands and go and you know go and buy those records. So that was the lifeline at the time. It's quite hard to get into get into anywhere. Being 16, cause I looked, I looked sort of 15 or 16. You know, even though you look, you look you're looking in a particular way. I mean, we used to sneak in a pub. Get a, get a, like a cheeky pint before we spotted someone's dad. I'm like, oh no, rumbled. Because he's around mate's house, listen to music, you know, el illicit drinks from you know, drinking Greek brandy from your mate's parents' drinks cabinet, and listen to music. You know, it's like all the money I had at the time was was spent on music or kind of comics. Um, so yeah, it was just usually round round sort of mate's houses really. Not, no, not really. I was kind of quite late to having a girlfriend. I was interested in girls, but I, before I sort of got really into music, I used to ride a BMX, and I used to ride a BMX for um, a shop in Cardiff called Dragon Wheels. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of the law in, in, in Wales. If you've got a business, it has to have Dragon in the name somewhere. Um, apologies to my brother's company, which has got a Dragon in the name. Um, but uh, yeah, so I was really into bikes. I was a bike kid, you know, my mates got on bikes. So I think when I probably should have been, um, you know, snogging girls in bus stops, I was out on my bike, you know, learning tricks and, you know, practicing for competitions and things like that. So I think it wasn't until I started going out that my interest in girls became uh, a bit more serious. Um, and obviously alcohol is a major part in that, <laughs> in, you know, <laughs> bravado. I remember, oh, I couldn't can, can tell you which part of pretty later in my 16 year that I had a bow tie and um, I kind of, I was, my kind of style guru was David Sylvian, <laughs> but you know, I really, I, I couldn't, I, you know, couldn't afford a, a light blue dent, a light blue leather suit jacket, which is just think, oh my God, that's so good. So it's kind of like what I could afford that fitted into that, so maybe some peg type trousers and some some horrible slip-on shoes with tassels on them. But then at the same time, you know, more often than not, it's a pair of Vans and jeans, really. It's not that far off what I wear most days, <laughs> most days when I come to the studio. Um, so yeah, I think it was um, uh, uh, sports casual new romantic. <laughs> Copyright. I used to read Wizard and Chips and Beano and Dandy and all those, and then I'd go, go around my, my, my grandparents and my dad's side, and he'd give me loads of like war comics and the little commando war comics, you know, which are good. You learn a smattering of German, but, um, uh, and then I saw 2000 AD. So I think the kind of punky, um, the punky, very British voice that that comic had, it's quite anarchic as well. Channel 4 was, because, you know, it was still a pretty young station back then. And they were doing lots of really interesting stuff. And it did seem like there were some, for want of a better word, quite experimental TV going on. They show like weird foreign films. And Channel 4 was the, it's kind of like the internet at the time. <laughs> it's kind of really show the weird stuff or the things that perhaps your parents wouldn't want you to watch. So again, that was a, that was a, that was a lifeline. But I think alternative comedy was really, I was, you know, obsessed with that. Um, what was it, Friday nights? 
Friday Night Live, Ben Elton, that was, that was, that was 85, so that, I wouldn't miss that. Um, also, I wouldn't mi miss Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious World, that again, might have been a bit earlier. I do remember a cat having a Casio VL tone and learning to play things on it, and I did, I did music at school, played the clarinet, and uh, that's, I think that's one of my regrets, is not carrying on with a musical instrument. And um, so I think that's something I would have probably gone back and said, look, carry on with it, doesn't matter what it is, if it's, a, if it's the clarinet or if it's the piano, it's just it's something I kind of regret that I didn't. And I, I make music now, but it's like, it's so much easier to learn when you're younger and, 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 and keep up with it. Like, as soon as I started to college, I realised that hard work kind of pays off. So I think I probably would have asked myself to pull my socks up a little bit earlier. And... Um, as much as I love my hometown, I think everyone has a kind of love-hate with it, certainly when you're growing up there. I would have probably advised myself to get out of there as soon as possible and just probably move to London. <laughs>